introduce Lucas Ambrosio from IMPA, and he's going to talk about rigidity of area minimizing free boundary surfaces. Is it on? Uh, yes. Hi. So thank you very much for the introduction. I would also like to thank the time for the kind invitation, and I'm very happy with this opportunity. Well, today I'm going to talk about some rigidity results. And since, since rigidity is a very common word in mathematics, no question. Since rigidity is a very common word in mathematics, and well, it has different meanings, even in geometry. I want to start by explaining you which kind of problems I'm going to address today. So sometimes I like to think about them the following way. You choose some geometry with special properties, and then you try to increase its curvature. But at the same time, you want to preserve some of the special geometrical properties of your model. Well, there are situations where you find obstructions. And if, after all, you cannot perform such a deformation, you can say your model is rigid in this sense. Let me give you an example. Consider the Euclidean space. So is it possible to increase its, its curvature while preserving the geometry of the infinity? Well, the answer is no. And this is actually a theorem. If a Riemannian metric on Rn has non-negative scalar curvature and coincides with the Euclidean outside a compact set, it must be isometric to the Euclidean metric itself. So. I think this is a beautiful result. It is related to very important results in geometry, like the positive mass theorem and the non-existence of non-flat metrics with non-negative scalar coach on the torus. Uh, it's a long story. You can look at the work of Shen and Yao and Wheaton and also Grom of Lawson. But there is a particular idea in this story that I would like to point out, a uh, fundamental observation that was used quite effectively by Shen and Yao and others after them. In a three manifold, a lower bound on the scalar curvature imposes strong restrictions on stable minimal surface lying inside it. <coughs> so let me make this statement a little bit more concrete by showing you this, uh, this theorem of Fisher, Cobre, and Shane. The theorem is the following. Uh, let N be orientable manifold with no negative scalar curvature. And suppose it contains a closed, orientable, stable minimal surface, sigma. And this, of course, means that sigma is a critical point of the area functional and that the second derivative of area is non-negative for all variations. Then the conclusion is that sigma must be either a sphere or a, to or a totally geodesic flat torus. Okay, so both geometrical and topological restrictions. Um, let's look at the second possibility. Let's look on the torus. So it was conjectured that a uh, hypothesis stronger than stability would imply strong restrictions on the geometry of M. And this was proved by Kyle and Galloway. So assume M is orientable manifold with non-negative scalar curvature, and suppose it contains an embedded locally minimizing torus. And here, locally minimizing means that every nearby surface must have greater area. So the conclusion is that there is a neighborhood of this torus which is isometric to this product here, um, where this slice is a flat torus. <coughs> so we can think about this theorem as a local rigidity result for a model which is a cylinder over a flat torus. Uh, how about other cylinders? In the case of the sphere, Bray, Brandon, and Nevis proved the following. So now we assume the scalar curvature is at least two, and we assume that M contains an embedded local area, min area minimizing sphere. Then the area of this sphere is at most four pi, and if equality holds, we have the splitting where now this slice uh, is a round sphere with constant curvature 1. <coughs> the remaining case was studied by Vald Nunes, uh, and his theorem is the following. So if M now has scalar curvature at least minus 2, and if it contains a closed, orientable, embedded, locally minimizing surface of higher genus, uh, then the area of this surface must be at most this expression here. And as before, we have a local splitting where this slice now has a hyperbolic metric. <coughs> OK, some remarks. The first one is that their work contains also global statements about the global splitting of some coverings of N. And the second remark is that 
After Rivaldo, Michalis and Moraro provide a unified approach to these three theorems. And their approach was very important in our own work, as I will going to show you later. OK, to finish this introduction, I show you this list of related rigid results. Of course, it's a non-exhaustive list, list. And since I talked very much about rigid, let me mention only the last one, which is a non-rigid result. So Brando, Fernando Coda, and Neves uh, constructed examples, constructed metrics in the hemisphere uh, that coincides with the round one near the equator, but have greater scalar coverage. <coughs> OK. So before <coughs> stating our result, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about free boundary surface. So during this week, we have seen interesting results about the subject. And here, I only want to show that they appear, they are free boundary minimal surface are critical points of a very variational problem. So I want to draw a picture. The problem I want to consider is the following. So in R3, we look at a domain omega bounded by a torus. So the boundary is a torus. So in this torus, we have homotopically non-trivial curves that bounds disks in omega, like this one and this one. And the problem is to minimize their area. So a problem proposed by Kuba in the 40s. Um, and of course, if we have a solution or a critical point to this problem, uh, the first variation of area must be zero for all admissible variations. And here, the admissible variations are those that preserves the, the torus, the boundary of the region. And if you look at the general formula, you see that a, a critical point must be a free boundary minimal surface. <coughs> OK. So now, a little bit of notation. So from now on, m will be a remaining three manifold with boundary. I will denote by sigma any compact surface with boundary, which is properly embedded in the m. And here, this means that sigma is embedded and that it meets the boundary in this way. And I will denote by i of sigma this, this is expression here. So this is the infimum of the scalar curvature over all m. This there is the area of sigma. This is the infimum of the mean curvature of the boundary of m. And this is the length of the boundary of sigma. <coughs> OK, the term is the following. So assume. M is being convex. And here, maybe I fix my convention. I will denote by x the outer at point in normal. And the mean curvature will be minus h times x. So my, my hypothesis is that the mean curvature vector points inside. In, a, in what? Sorry. <coughs> so I assume M contains a compact properly embedded two sided free boundary minimal, minimal surface, which is locally area minimizing. And here, of course, locally area minimizing means that every nearby properly embedded surface must, be, must have greater area. <coughs> well, then, sorry, the conclusion is that this expression, i of sigma, must be at most 2 pi the Euler characteristic of sigma. And moreover, we can say what happens in the quality case. In the quality case, if we assume also that each component, each component of the boundary of sigma is locally length minimizing in the boundary of M, or this infimum is zero, then we have the splitting. A neighborhood of sigma is isometric to this product, uh, where this slice has constant Gaussian curvature equal to this. And the boundary of sigma has constant geodesic curvature equal to, to this. <coughs> OK, so you can think, so this is a in fact, a direct generalization of the previous results. <coughs> okay. So now, let's talk about the proof. So, in the first step, we follow Shane Yao and use the stability inequality to, to get the desired inequality. <coughs> then we analyze what happens if equality holds. So, 
there are geometrical restrictions, and those restrictions are called infinitesimal rigidity. After that, we will construct an interesting foliation around sigma. So a foliation that is a foliation by free boundary, constant mean curvature surface. <coughs> Why do, do we do that? Well, because we know sigma is locally area minimizing. So we want to compare its area with nearby surface. And we can do this uh, comparison to the leaves. Uh, we can compare the area of sigma with the area of the leaves of this foliation. <coughs> so we use the locally area minimizing hypothesis to conclude the local splitting. <coughs> okay. Okay. So let's start with the stability inequality here. It, this is the second derivative area for uh, uh, free boundary minimal surface, okay, for a variation uh, whose variation of vector field is given by phi times the normal, okay, and this is a demissible variation since sigma is uh, free boundary. And our assumptions implies that this must be non negative for all phi. So we choose phi to be constant. We use the Gauss equation. And also this equation here, which relates the mean curvature of the boundary of M with the geodesic curvature of uh, sigma. Okay? This relation is true because sigma is free boundary. To rewrite, so to get this, this inequality here. So observe that the last term we can calculate by the gauss bonnet theorem. And taking the infinite here, we get the inequality. <coughs> so this is a well-known argument. <coughs> so the next step is to analyze what happens in the equality case. So we dropped out this term. So this term is the second fundamental form. Therefore, in the equality case, sigma must be totally geodesic. Uh, also, we take the infinite here. So the, mean the scalar curvature of M must be constant along sigma equal to this, uh, similar state, statement to H. And also that Q of the constant function is zero. But Q is a non-negative quadratic form. So the constant function is in the nullity of Q. And you, you can er, uh, uh, conclude that, well, the rich, normal rich must be zero, and this term also must be zero. <coughs> OK. So this summarizes what, what I have said. Uh, in the equality case, we have those three conditions, which I call infinitesimal rigidity. <coughs> OK, there are some remarks. The first one is that an infinitesimal rigid surface must have constant curvature. And also that the, the boundary of sigma must consist of geodesics of the boundary of M. And so if you think a little bit about the hypothesis we are doing about the boundary of sigma being locally length minimizing. This shows that these are hypothesis makes sense. OK. So the next step is the construction of the free boundary foliation, CMC foliation. Um, so the idea is to use the implicit function theorem. So how do we do this? We, we use some flow to parameterize the nearby properly embedded surface as by, by using functions defined on sigma, okay? And then we look at this function, of, this function here. So HT plus U is the mean curvature of the surface sigma T plus U. And this term here measures the angle between the normal to sigma T plus U with the normal to the boundary of M. So of course, well, you can see that this is 0 if and only if sigma t plus u is a free boundary constant mean curvature surface. So we want to solve phi equals 0. Well, we want to solve u as a function of t. So we differentiate phi in this direction, and we get this operator here. And this is true because sigma is infinitesimally rigid. Um, so we notice that. If this is zero, v, v must be a solution to the 
Neumann problem, the homogeneous Neumann problem. Therefore, it must be constant. But since we are working on function on, on this space of functions that have uh, zero mean value, uh, v must be zero. Okay. So we use some PDE theory, theory to con to conclude this uh, isomorphism, and then we use the implicit function theory. <coughs> okay. So, uh, okay, maybe at this point I should say that the idea of using CMC foliations had appeared in the work of Bray, Brando, and Nevis. So, in this case we have the boundary, well, the correct condition is the free boundary condition. <coughs> so now we come to the crucial step, which is to compare the area of the slices with the area of sigma zero. <coughs> uh, and the point is that since we have a uh, CMC free boundary foliation, the only thing that controls the variation of area is the mean curvature. So we look at the, the equations satisfied by, by it. So this whole t is the, well, we choose a parametrization, whole t is the normal velocity, and those two equations are true. Uh, so by doing some manipulation, similar to that one we done to the stability inequality, we get this inequality here. But sigma zero is infinitesimally rigid. So this is I of sigma zero, which is this. Now we use our hypothesis. Well, this, the boundary of sigma zero is less minimizing. This must be less than or equal to zero. If not, this is zero. So in any case, this is less than or equal to this. In the, in the last line, I only had re rewritten this difference as an integral. And by the first variation formula, this is that. <laughs> okay? Uh, so h, the function h, which is 0 at time 0, satisfies this differential inequality. And we, this is the same inequality that had appeared in the work of Michalas and Moraro. So what they showed, they showed a kind of maximum principle. And for example, they conclude that a of t must be non-positive non for a smaller, for a small interval. Okay, so what does it say? Does it say that the area decreases? Okay, <coughs> so this proves the claim. <coughs> After that, well, we assume we know sigma zero is locally area minimizing. Therefore, uh, each sigma t must have the same area as sigma zero, and must be locally area minimizing also. And then we, by our hypothesis, we can compare again i of sigma zero with i of sigma t. So we have equality here, and by the first part, we conclude each sigma t is infinitesimally rigid. Okay. So our foliation is in, f is in fact a foliation by pre-boundary totally geodesic surface, and then we can conclude uh, the local splitting. <laughs> okay. This is the end of the proof. So. So in the case of disks, we have also a global result. Okay. Uh, so let f denote this set of disks. So sigma is immersed disk such that the boundary of sigma is containing the boundary of m, and it is a homotopically non-trivial curve in the boundary of m. This a here is a global invariant. It is the infimum of the area of disks in f. And L is the infimum of the length of the boundary of disks in F. <coughs> so the theorem is the following. Uh, let M be a compact mean convex manifold with F non-empty. Then this invariant here must be at most 2 pi. And if equality holds, we get a global splitting of the universal covering. So the universal covering must be this complete cylinder, where the slice has constant Gaussian curvature, and the boundary of the disk has uh, constant geodesic curvature. <coughs> so I should mention that, well, Martin Lee uh, studied also this problem, and he proved a similar statement. Uh, in the case, the infimum of the scalar curvature is zero, and the, the manifold is strictly mean convex. Okay, but his his technique is, is different from ours. 
Um, so the, what, what makes the proof work? No, works. What makes the proof work is that we can solve the the free boundary problem. We can realize A as the area of a distance F. And this is a theorem by Mix and Yao. So under the, the, those hypotheses, we can, we, we, uh, there exists a disk in F that has the least possible area. And this disk is a properly embedded free boundary minimal disk, of course. <laughs> so the proof goes as follow, follows. Uh, uh, Sigma, so we, we start with mix and yaw solution, okay? It's a global minimizer for the problem. And then we can compare i of m with i of sigma zero. And by the first part, it is at most two pi. If equality holds, well, equality here says that sigma zero is infinitesimally rigid, and the equality here indicates this is not zero, implies that this equals this. So the, the boundary of sigma zero has the, min, the least possible length. So in any case, we can apply our first result, the local result, to get a local splitting. But since sigma zero is a global minimizer, we can, uh, we can extend this isometer. So we can uh, do some continuation argument to get the global splitting of the universal covering. <coughs> so since I have a few minutes, I would like to show you this corollary of theorem B, which is a rigid result for solutions of the plateau problem. So now we assume M is compact, strictly mean convex. We assume that the, mean, the scalar curvature, uh, the infimum of the scalar curvature is negative, let's say minus two. And we assume also that F is non empty. <coughs> so let gamma be a homotopically non trivial curve in the boundary of M that bounds a disk in M and has the, the least possible length. Then we look at the solutions of, for the plateau problem to this gamma. And those solutions exist by other result by Mix and Yao. And for such solutions, the, sigma hat, well, the area of sigma hat must be at most this, at least this. <laughs> and the, again, in the quality case, we have the splitting of the universal coding. <coughs> and the proof is, is, is uh, the, the proof is very quick. Well, uh, by definition, the area of sigma hat is at most this, this length equals is the minimum possible. And then since the infimum of the scalar curvature is negative, well, we reverse this inequality here, and we can compare i of sigma hat with i of m. And therefore, the theorem follows, uh, this, this result follows from theorem B. OK. So, OK, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.